the issue of homelessness does not belong to COTS, it belongs to our community and to our region. And we began to establish an identity of being a community of compassion, of caring. You meet the people that you're helping, you see how it's helping them, and you see how they're able to take what you've done and go places and, you know, pull their life back together. And the fact that we all live together in this community and we can support each other in this community is a wonderful thing. When homeless people first began to appear on the streets of Burlington, a group of community volunteers responded with a single purpose, to make sure that no one would freeze to death during the bitter winter nights in City Hall Park. In 1982, they opened the door to that first shelter on Christmas Eve on a wing and a prayer without a blueprint or roadmap to guide them. During this time, federal spending on housing and rental assistance began a retreat that continues to this day. Making matters worse, Burlington became a boom town, winning accolades for livability that were well deserved, but also led to soaring property values. It soon became clear that homelessness would be a long-term problem, that a bed and a blanket were just not enough. Cots would have to broaden its reach. In 1983, the Wilson Hotel went on the market. It was a candidate for conversion to upscale condos, and its 22 residents would end up on the street. Although Cots was new and had no track record or credit rating, the late Dudley Davis, then president of the Merchants Bank, saw the need, took a chance, and organized a consortium of banks to underwrite a loan so Cots could purchase the building for low-cost permanent housing. And I think we've had one of the best experiences of, of that kind of thing, where businesses, schools, churches, community agencies, and, and people downtown particularly, all came together to work on this project. The Wilson also housed the way station, Cott's overnight emergency shelter for single adults. Last year, an average of 29 people a night took refuge in this shelter. In 1994, the community responded again, enabling the renovation of a building for staff offices and the day station. On average, 50 individuals visit this daytime shelter every day. With the help of community volunteers, the day station is open 365 days a year, providing an array of services and a daily meal. There were a number of homeless people who were staying in the day station during the day who had to work at night and they needed a place to rest during the day. And at the time there was only one or two beds. So I ended up building three bunk beds, two of which were actually put in the day station to increase that capacity. More than anything, my project was a collaborative project between COTS, between the Scouts, and between local businesses who you know, donated materials, donated money. 1986 brought a disturbing sign of the times when a homeless family arrived seeking shelter. The way station was simply not suitable for families, and again, the community rallied. With help from the city of Burlington and tremendous volunteer support, Cots purchased an unused firehouse and converted it into a shelter for five families. The firehouse family shelter provides a safe and supportive environment for families who might otherwise have to sleep in their car. It can happen overnight before you even know it. I never dreamed in my, in my whole lifetime I would ever be homeless. So in the early 2000s, when the percentage of homeless families was increasing, it became more clear that more housing was needed and more shelter housing was needed for families, and Cots began looking at what are the alternatives. So Cots had an extraordinary opportunity, and that was to purchase uh, the old YWCA building at 278 Main Street. And we had a pretty narrow window. This was winter, and uh, we needed to raise money by Labor Day to purchase the building and to renovate it. So we had a committee of community volunteers and uh, board members at a time when there were something like 45 or 50 capital campaigns going on in the city. and raised uh, over a million dollars uh, in a, about a six month period and uh, to see that response from the community was so heartening. Both family shelters are staffed around the clock and every family has a COTS caseworker. COTS is able to be that safe place that the family or mother can be. COTS is a joy of an organization to work with. Lund and COTS work together along with many other organizations to provide complementary services so that people don't fail um, once they get to permanent housing. 
Over the years, COTS has received awards for creating innovative strategies that go beyond emergency shelter, programs that offer long-term solutions to homelessness. Part of the solution to solving homelessness is to increase the supply of affordable housing. One improbable example of that strategy was the purchase of St. John's Hall. And I'll never forget the time that I walked in there with Sister Lucille and I thought it was such an act of faith on her part to uh, A, consider buying this old bingo hall and put housing in it, and B, that she thought we could actually do something creative and work in there and serve 18 people in four apartments. Together, the Wilson and St. John's Hall provide 44 units of subsidized permanent housing. What I have now at, at, by living at St. John's are, are the little things that a lot of people take for granted but are very important to me, uh, like a phone and a TV and, you know, a door I can close. The Smith House was donated to Cots by a local church. Residents here receive professional support while overcoming obstacles such as complex disabilities, substance abuse problems, and poor credit histories. Another strategy involves the Cots Homelessness Prevention Fund, which provides emergency assistance to households facing unexpected financial crisis. In its first four years, this program has kept 88 households from facing eviction. Cots will come in with some financial aid so the family doesn't lose their apartment and go back on the streets, because it takes a lot more effort to get someone off the streets than it does to just maintain them in their home. From the start, COTS has been a community effort, relying on community support for more than half its funding and providing a way for people from all walks of life to get involved and make a difference. People like to contribute to their community. They like to have a way to do that. And I think COTS is one of the best vehicles uh, that we have for doing this. They rely heavily on volunteer work and projects like my Eagle Scout project are very important to them and very appreciated. I think any time one is able to give of oneself in terms of time or energy is certainly a good feeling and certainly good knowing that someone else is being helped. It's not only the clients appreciate it, but everyone who works at COTS appreciates it and there's a real sense of accomplishment there. A great way that anyone can participate is the COTS Walk, now an annual spring tradition in Burlington. Last year, over 1,500 people walked the walk that a homeless person might take each day for basic services and shelter. The way the cost walk is structured is really great because people get to go and see the facilities that your money is going to help. The COTS Walk has become a way for uh, parents, uh, church school, youth group leaders, um, people in schools to, to say to children, um, take this walk with us and let's go out and walk and see the shelters, see the programs, and hear a really hopeful message. For 25 years, the number of people facing homelessness has grown steadily and COTS has provided the safety net, the only place to turn for those whom our society has cast aside, our most vulnerable neighbors. COTS made me feel like a human being. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for COTS. I wouldn't be alive today without COTS. The story of COTS is the story of the compassion, courage, and commitment of a community with a vast capacity to